when Dr. Tyre comes in, dentist, very established person, and he says, I demand a stone fly, salmon fly at that, that is not foam, you do it. Okay, this fly has honestly been out for over a year. And so the story behind this is that one of our buddies, old Jared Tire, he came to me and he fishes a lot up in uh, Idaho and fishes salmon flies a lot. And he said, hey, I want a salmon fly that is not based on foam. And so I really like challenges like that. So I took his his suggestions and I just started messing around so this you know I came up with a few iterations and this one's kind of morphed a little tiny bit but this is pretty close to what I, I sent back to him um, anyway long story short he fished this fly and absolutely crushed him so that I think there are like nine CDC feathers on this fly it floats really really well with the new CDC floatants out there like uh, Tiemco Dry Magic, Loon, Loxa, Flyagra, any of those, uh, this fly will float really, really, really well. Um, and uh, I like using those floatants more than, say, the powders. So anyway, this is a cool fly. Um, you can tie it in a bunch of different colors, but we're just going to get started. I've had a whole bunch of fun tying this one. Now, the name on this one is Libby's Stonefly because Jared's daughter's named Libby. So shout out to you, Libby. She's a, a young lady who ties a lot of our flies, so you can give her thanks for this pattern. It's her bug, but I'm tying it. All right, so we're going to start out with a 3X long hook. This is a TMCO 5263. Use the 3X long hook of your choice. Um, and one thing about salmon flies um, that you see like commercially available a lot of them have too much orange so the salmon flies that that hatch aren't all the way black they're not all the way orange they're not brown they're just kind of like this weird like dusty black color so we're gonna try to get that but also they're a very slender bub, bug and so we're gonna build up a little bit of a, a slender um, abdomen on this one and it, there's not a lot of taper in that so we're not going to want this you know tapered going from thin to fat or anything like that so we're just going to build up kind of an even abdomen on this um, now it's slender but the, the hook shank is too skinny so the first thing I'm going to do is build that up with some polypropylene yarn um, some people will wrap foam around the hook shank and then compress all the air out of it and in my opinion that just kind of defeats the purpose of foam. So I'm just going to use poly yarn and I've chosen orange on this so that if you get one of these chewed up by a fish the color that will show through is orange. So I'm going to wrap down the bend just a tiny tiny bit and then I'll go up to here this is about where the thorax is going to start. And the head on salmon flies is also very thin as well. If you do a Google search for a salmon fly, you'll see that the, the heads on the adults are not big and bulky, um, like, like a bullet head or a big foam head. So we'll try to build a, a slender head on this one. So for this, I'll just take this poly yarn and wrap this forward. And it can kind of spread out like it's wanting to do on me. And that's fine. We're just creating a little bit of a an abdomen here. So I just wrap that forward and trim off. Um, so I'm going to cover this up or, or take my thread back down to the very bend of the the hook. Now the salmon fly has a you know two set or a, two tails coming out the back. And looking at the the actual natural fly, it's almost like there's a little bump and then the, the tails come off the side of the fly. So to achieve that, I'll just start building a little bit of dubbing up before I tie those uh, rubber legs in for the tail. So you can use a bunch of different dubbings. This is just like a beaver blend. You can use 
uh, hair's mask, you can use squirrel, you can use synthetics, but just, uh, and the other thing is the salmon flies are different a little bit based on the river, so choose the color that most cl closely matches your salmon flies. And I'm just going to tie in a little butt of dubbing like that. From here I'm going to take some uh, size small round rubber legs and this is going to be our tails. Now they're a little bit thinner than the than the legs on this fly. So I'm just going to tie one on one side and then I'm going to flip that over and tie the other one on the other side. Now I can take those legs and kind of position them how I want but also when I when I start wrapping dubbing again it will push those legs back see those are pointing a little bit too far up for me but I can uh, use dubbing to manipulate those down alright so the ribbing on this fly is going to be body glass but you can really use any type of of uh, stretchy uh, clear plastic material the body glass in orange kind of adds a little bit of orange to the body of this but not too much what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lighter to it and melt it a little bit like that so if I cut off that nasty part on the end there's a really flat tie-in point here and I will just tie that in like that I'm actually going to get rid of this little hanger out. Okay, now I'm ready to dub the body. And this, Q Curtis or Brig, whoever's editing this, my faithful compadres of the fly craft. That's it. Once our body is all dubbed and nice, I'm going to take this body glass and I'm going to counter rib my dubbing fairly closely. You're wanting to kind of rib it as a salmon fly would. They're kind of multi-segmented. And from here I will tie this off. You can you notice that I'm tying it off up on the body. Uh, mostly because I want to tie in a wing that won't flare so I, I made a bump up uh, or I, I'm tying it in up here and that's where I'm going to tie the the wing um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second but the, the wing on this one has multiple layers so it's got a an elk I think this is an elk mane look at the the link in our description to see the material list for this but this is a, a very non-flareable hair. It's, it's a very thin hair that's not hollow. So I'm going to use that to, uh, to, make the un to make the first layer of the wing on this fly. <laughs> and Brigham, you know how Brigham is, he said that I've got to use this hair stacker that has stackers on stackers. So full disclosure this is the first time I've ever even taken this thing out so I'll take the uh, second to smallest one and uh, the reason I chose that is because this stuff's actually pretty dang long this really isn't going to add a lot of flotation to the fly but it's just going to give a kind of the appearance of a wing the salmon flies have down uh, down wings along the back that are pretty slender so this is a pretty good way to achieve that so we'll just align those tips sorry about the tool noise tool noise people uh, try this there maybe a little better all right so I've got the the tool or I've got the the hair all aligned like this now if I were to tie this in up in front of this body, the thread would want to push that upward. And I want this to just lay right along the back of the fly. 
So there are two things that I'm going to do here. Number one, I'm going to tie it up on this thicker body. And I want the wing to go kind of maybe halfway down the tails on these bugs. So there's my tie-in point. But to secure it, I'm going to wrap down. And then I'll trim that off. And then even to, to do, like, to double down on my, my wing going back, what you can do is you can take a bodkin and you can come up here underneath the wing and grab that and push the wing forward and crease it like that and it will bend the wing down. I gotta really crease that with my fingers. So our wing's gonna kinda face downward like that and to make sure that that stays where I want it, I'm actually going to take some resin and just kinda dab a little bit of resin on that crease. Now this this is all kind of unnecessary, but you know, as the salmon hat or salmon fly hatch gets going, the fish become a little bit more and more, more wary of the the bug. So whatever you can do to kind of give yourself a little advantage, it didn't take much time at all to do that. And we have kind of a cool wing. Alright. Next goes some CDC. This is our first first batch of CDC feathers. And I'm going to take two fairly healthy feathers like that. I'll align the tips and I'm just going to lay those down right on top of that wing. Just like that right there. So it's okay if these bush out a little bit because these are more to just add flotation. They're still going to see that, that little elk hair wing on the back. Um, the next thing I'm going to add is our first set of legs for this fly. So I'm just going to take some medium round rubber and I'll tie one leg in on each side of the fly. So there's one on that side and I'm just going to pull this one over, catch it in on the other side. So just like that. Okay, now we are going to build the thorax of this fly, which is more CDC. Now for the for the wings on this fly, I use this new Swiss CDC and just the standard uh, the standard quality. Um, you really can use any grayish CDC that you want for this. But for the body, I really do like this Select XL, um, and I've I've got two different colors here. So I've got dark gray khaki, and I have new blue dun. Well, they're roughly the same color. So any grayish. Uh, CDC that you can find is going to do the trick for this. Now, let me show you why they call this Select XL. Because the feathers on these are just absolutely phenomenal. So, here are three feathers. They're really long, really super full. So I'll align those and then I'll show you one of the coolest new tools that's been released. It's really simple. It's the hairline feather prepper. So you guys remind, you, you remember the video of me showing how to use the Swiss multi-clamp. Hairline has like the perfect tool to line up CDC. So I'm going to use this uh, table. I'll kind of show you how I do it. Let's take those three feathers and make sure that the stems are all nice and aligned. Find the gap in this feather prepper that fits the, the feathers I'm going to put in. I have all three of them in there. I'll just trim the ends. Like that. And now I can take my Swiss clamp. Did Brigham steal it? Oh, it's right in front of my face. Old number 88, Dale Jr. almost got stolen by Brig. 
but he didn't. So I'll just grab that. Once I have it in there, I just open up that gap and boom, I have feathers. All right, I've trimmed those off and I'm just gonna throw this in a loop, but I'm gonna double up my loop because I do not want this to, to come undone while, while I'm fishing it. So I make a double loop. You can see that's pretty wide open on the side, so I'm just gonna close off the loop so that when I twist it up, it's not gonna fall out. And then my thorax is gonna end about right here. All right, another favorite of mine, the CF, CNF Design Top Twister. I've really started to like that tool. All right, I'll load up my loop. If you wanna learn how to use this multi-clamp, we have a video of nothing but techniques for it. So I'm just gonna assume that you all have watched that a whole bunch of times. So here's my CDC hackle. Maybe pick out a few of those fibers. And then I'm just going to wrap that and I'm going to preen these feathers back after each turn. About to right there. All right, so you can see it's a real bushy thorax and that's exactly how we want it to look. If you want, you can uh, take this fly and trim the bottom flush, but I just usually let it ride. All right, so the next step is to find our piece of uh, small rubber leg, and we're gonna tie on little antenna with this, so whatever you need to do to tie one on one side. As you can see when I tied that on it kicked off to that side and then I'm going to just pull that over and tie the other one on the other side of the hook. So with any luck when I trim those they'll look like two little antenna. Like that. This guy's got a wind-blown antenna. Even better, that's what the fish are looking for. All right, so I'm gonna come back in here and grab, you know, some of the standard CDC, or you could use the select, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> and this is going to create like a CDC bullet head for this fly. So I have three feathers that are all aligned, and I'm gonna measure the length on this about the same distance from, I don't know, the, the back of the wing all the way to the front of the thorax. And that's right where I'm going to tie this in, facing forward. Just like that. And yes, this is a pretty messy fly until you get it all buttoned up. All right. Once I have that tied in, I'm just going to go back to my dubbing um, that I used for the body. And we'll build up a little head. Keep in mind, you want to keep the head fairly small on this one. Okay. So once we're here, we've created the head we're just going to pull those CDC feathers back over the top of the head and tie those down. Maybe spread them out a little bit. If you get some chunks like that, you can just come in here and trim them down. All right. So as you can see, we're almost done and I have very few orange hot spots on this fly. There's a little bit of orange, but to me, that's like the perfect amount of orange for a salmon fly. Now to add the last set of legs, we're going to come in here with the medium size, and we're just going to do a crisscross criss rubber leg application like you would on normal, like any like chubby Chernobyl. The way I do it is I just tie, tie one in 
one in on one side and loop it around, tie the other one on, on the other side. Then we'll trim those off, trim them to size, about like that. So you can see we've got six legs coming off of it. And then this is a kind of an optional step. You don't have to do this, but um, typically what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a little indicator on this. It's a pretty dark colored fly. There's not a lot of lighter colored stuff on the top of it. so. We'll just take a, a little piece of this poly yarn, take about half a piece of poly yarn, tie that in, and then double it back on top of itself, and catch in that little loop that you made. That's easier said than done, but practice it. Now I'll cut that indicator about halfway down the wing, or maybe a little bit less. And then just a hand whip finish or dab with super glue. On that thread tie in point, I just leave bare. Um, that's a little, uh, little hot spot of orange. But anyway, there's your uh, Libby's salmon fly. You can adapt this to a whole bunch of different flies. I will use a good example and dab it with super glue, though, on the thread wraps because we don't want that to come apart. Anyway, if you're sick of fishing foam salmon flies, try this one. It works.